Hello and welcome to another edition of Diaspora Weekly, the studio version. If you've been joining us lately, we, because of COVID, we've been doing a lot of these virtual interviews. But every once in a while, we have a great friend come over to talk about some very important stuff. And today is one of those things. Wait till you hear what we have to talk about. But as usual, before we go there, we get to the... Today's jungle, <laughs> I'll make it very simple. I mean, I can't contain myself with this. A couple of days ago, we heard that a Chinese national has been installed a chief of Kwewu uh, Abetifi, I believe. Now, I have no problem with foreign nationals being installed chief or giving mm -hmm chieftaincy title. After all, they are mostly symbolic. I get it. In fact, I've known a lot of African Americans who come in, developmental chief, they do some things. Now, what is interesting about this particular thing is this. And over here at Diaspora Weekly in Django, remember Django means Jermaine's angle. That's my opinion. If we look at the broader context and look at the Chinese attitude towards Africans, and Africa. Me, everything that I do, I'd like to be very reciprocal. You treat me good, I'll treat you good. You treat me bad, I don't have to treat you good. Right? And I'm speaking street language here. So why is it that two months ago, just barely two months ago, Africans in Guangzhou were being kicked out of their homes, disallowed from entering shops, being treated like animals, basically. COVID-19 that the whole world is dealing with originated from Wuhan. But yet, they told their people that we Africans somehow brought it. Now, if some people treat you like this, me, look, I have Chinese friends. I love them to death. But they are the first persons to know that if you treat my people badly in your country, there is no way I'm going to roll the red carpet for you. And this thing that I'm talking about, I wish that our diplomats and our, our politicians will have the same attitude. Then maybe Ghanaians or Africans will not be treated badly all over the world. The question is this. Why do you treat our people badly in your country? But then when you come here, you want us to roll the red carpet for you. I don't understand that. Whatever money is involved, great. You want to put money in my pocket? Yes, but you're not going to buy my conscience. And so shame on to people who do that stuff. I don't know how much money was paid to this chief to make him a developmental chief, but when you look, go to Zambia and look at what is happening in Zambia to the point where Zambian nationals are now calling their own country Chambia because of the Chinese takeover of the country. You should know these things. But where does it start from? It starts from little steps like this. Again, let me be clear. I don't have any problem with Chinese people person to person. But if you're going to mistreat our people in your country, there is no way we should roll the red carpet. I'm not saying treat Chinese people badly in Ghana. That's not what I'm saying. But don't roll the red carpet for them in response to them treating our people badly in their country. This is jungle for today. We'll be back to meet my, uh, my, my guest. We wake up every morning to different stories from politics, business, sports, and entertainment. These stories, one way or the other, affect our lifestyle and dealings with family, friends, and business associates. Your take on Diaspora Network Television gives you an opportunity to have your take on these pertinent issues via phone in and messages to our social media platforms DNT Ghana on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If it's an important trend and story, we will definitely talk about it. Your take with me, Yalsechi, on DNT. Would you buy anything 
without first knowing exactly what the product was and how it could benefit you, definitely not. Neither should you vote for your next member of parliament without knowing who they are and how they plan to solve your problems. Watch the next MP only on Diaspora Network Television and find out the men and women who want to represent you in parliament. The next MP only on DNT. All right, welcome back. Today we have a special discussion that you're going to be interested in. I know that within Africa, most Africans concentrate on the politics within their respective countries. But today we're going to take you outside the borders of Ghana and bring you an expert, someone who's been following the continental politics. Please help me welcome my friend, Advocate Sapo, Sapo Ababrese. Thank you, my brother. Vinia, welcome. Thank you, Vinia. You are the president, the founder and president of Coalition of Supporters Union of Africa. Yeah. So you're all over the continent. Yes. Anything going on at African Union in Addis Ababa, you know it on the back of your hand. Uh, not really, but <laughs> yeah, that's my job. <laughs> Let's get to it. What's going on at uh, African Union? Well, we just had um, the close of nominations for the African Union um, elections. Mm -hmm. Uh, we understand right now the current chairperson, mm -hmm. Mr. Faki Musa Mahamat of Chad, mm -hmm. is uh, virtually running unopposed. Virtually running or all running unopposed? Uh, running unopposed, you know, because um, there wasn't, no nomination came up, you why, know, why, against him. Why didn't anybody nominate any comp competitors? Sure. That's a question that can take a whole day to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, before I come to that, mm -hmm. we also understand right now that there are two ladies that are running for the deputy chairperson position. Okay. So that's, that, that straight away, that means that um, Ghana's own um, Excellency Kwesi Kote mm -hmm. is out of contention now. So that means that um, in March next year, his term comes to an end and, uh, you know, he, he packs back and back. Yeah. Wow. And, and it becomes a private citizen of the Republic of Ghana. So how did all this manifest? I mean, I know everywhere there is politics, but I'm hoping that you'll be able to dissect all this. <laughs> Let's start with how Faki came in. How did he come in? Well, Faki came in four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, we understand he was a late addition. You know, we had a couple of... Um, other contestants uh -huh. for that position. First of all, let me explain this to those that um, do not know. Mm -hmm. For the African Union elections, mm -hmm. we actually have two levels. Okay, we have the we have the African Union. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is headed by one head of state from one country right. per year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that rotates. Among, it's among the heads of states. Mm -hmm. And then we have the African Union Commission. When you see the word commission added, mm -hmm. it means that it is not run by a president, but it's run by a chairperson. Right. Okay. And it is that that we're talking about here. That's the executive arm of the, the executive arm of that. Okay. That's the real power wielders. Okay. They, they, they implement decisions. They make things run. So and basically the, the, the leaders... The 55 heads of state, they're busy running their respective countries. countries. They've managed they, to come together as a body, but they said, nah, none of us will have time to run this African Union. So let's have one person who's the chair of the African Union Commission. Commi commission, yeah. And that's the executive arm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Right. So at the same time, we have the ceremonial head. Mm -hmm. That is one of the 55 presidents or right. heads of states right. that, run, that, that, that runs the affairs of the African Union, you know, attends the ceremonies and things like that for one year. Okay. That rotates amongst them. But at the same time, they also elect someone else that mm -hmm. sits there for four years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he stays in that office on the 18th floor of the African Union Commission building, mm -hmm. you know, and he is the one that actually is the president of Africa for four years. Okay. Okay, and that person uh -huh. doesn't have to be a politician. Right. He doesn't have to be, you know, whoever the 55 heads of states elect. So I can run. You can run, yeah. Ah. If, if Ronaldo nominates you. You're putting some ideas <laughs> in my head, oh, my brother. <laughs> okay. 
If if your country president nominates you uh -huh. and ECOWAS accepts you, uh -huh. they put you on the ballot paper. Wow. Okay. It's, so it, then it's, how come? Well, so the way you explain, okay, Ghana, uh, Africa has five regions. Yeah. Can you name them for us? Yeah, West Africa, mm -hmm. that is ECOWAS. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it becomes a challenge because Kozoa, we have seven regions. Ah. But for, <laughs> yeah, for the, for, for, I mean, the political medicine is five. Okay. It's West Africa, East mm -hmm. Africa, Central Africa, SADC, which is Southern Africa, and then North Africa. Okay, and Faki is from Central Africa. He's from Central Africa. He's from Chad. So, okay, so you want to tell me that a person from Chad, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're talking about big boy countries in Africa, Chad is not exactly one of mm -hmm. them. So how does a Chadian former prime minister, right, mm -hmm. now has so much power that he's told West Africa, uh, Ghana, Nigeria, shut up. <laughs> We're going to North America, Egypt, Tunisia, oh, shut up. Going to East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, shut up. Southern Africa, to Zimbabwe, South Africa, shut up. I'm the big boss. How did that happen? Well, first of all, he's been on the, on the throne for four years. Okay. Okay. And uh, I personally, and my organization, one, one, maybe I, I represent the organization in, in our views, he's not been the best chairperson for the four years that he's I think he's you're been being there. kind. What do you really <laughs> want to say about his leadership? <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know. I mean, almost everybody knows. I mean, everybody meaning? Everybody, everybody that pays attention to I the political the things in Africa. I heard some call him a dead horse. Is that true? Some even called him a dog. Yeah. Wow. yeah. But they're willing to let a dog lead the continent. That, that is one of the most amazing... <laughs> things that you know you, you can't you just can't put a finger on it you just can't understand because yeah here is here we have a situation where we have a chairperson that has been there for four years we also have a deputy chairperson that has also been there for four years if you do the calculations okay for them to even get there in the first place Faki Mahamad had to go for real runs three real runs before he could garner the 33 votes that he needed to become the chairperson. On the contrary... 33 we, being two-thirds of yes, the votes. Yes, of the votes, votes okay. of the 55. Of the 55. Okay. He had to go for real runs and real runs and real runs. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, we have His Excellency Kwesi Korte, the deputy chairperson. Okay. He, his was one, one touch. Uh, one touch, 45, 45 votes. votes. 45 out of 55, one, one touch. touch. And the, he also had five contestants. He picked 45, the other five shared the 10 votes. That was unprecedented. Right. So he gets there for the four years. His achievements speak for itself. I will Namely. personally, <laughs> if, if we do have the time to go through them, I, I've had occasions to do that. Even in our meeting with the Minister of Foreign Affairs when we were trying to um, push for his nomination. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some of them, them that even uh, we as Ghanaians, okay, would you believe that this ACFTA that was, mm -hmm. you know, the AFCTA? Yes. Okay. The African Whose idea was that? It was Chris Corte's idea. Interesting. Let anybody challenge me. Okay. okay. It was Chris Corte that mooted the idea in as far back as 2012. Okay. 2012. Okay, maybe we we'll go a little back. Mm -hmm. Kwesikote was the uh, uh, Ghana ambassador to Ethiopia and okay. to the African Union. Okay. okay. By the time it was President Kufuor that posted him to be the mm -hmm. Ghana's ambassador to Ethiopia. Okay. So by the time government changed in 2009, mm -hmm. he was there. Okay. When Mills Muhammad Mills administration came, him. they kept him there. Okay. Okay. So when you remember in 2012, Prof. Professor Mills of blessed memory mm -hmm. went to Ethiopia to unveil the statue of Kwame Nkrumah right. that had been built by all of Africa at the AU headquarters. Okay. Okay. And it was at that point, you know, that Ghana's ambassador to Ethiopia and being to the African Kwesi Union, being Kwesi Korte, mm -hmm. okay, mooted the idea that, look, if, if, if Ghana can receive such, you know, ovation from the entire, entirety of Africa, mm -hmm. and if the whole of Africa, the first statue that was ever 
put up by any African uh, 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 country mm -hmm. happen to be that of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't we start talking about get, getting Ghana to host an African uh, uh, free trade this in, in, in Ghana? Okay. Okay. So, I know for a fact that when Professor Mills read his speech and, you know, put that to the rest of the continent, the Ghana's answer. ambassador had a huge hand in that. Okay. He okay. inserted that in He in advised, advised, of course. Okay. You have to advise a president. Right, right, right. You know. Right. And the president made that bold this thing, request that, okay. look, Ghana, we want this, we can host this. And from 2012, Excellency Kwesikoti has been the front runner for this mission. Wow. Yes. And so everywhere. Why he's, he's gone through, every, he's gone to Malaysia, you know, Barbados, all these places, and, and campaigned actively. The records are there. So why is he... Not and and now <laughs> maybe I'm fast and, 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 okay. and now we have a situation where just a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. his dream becomes a reality and we have Ghana has the African free trade and is is inaugurated here in Ghana here Accra. in Ghana in his home country Ghana and we have this Chadian guy you're talking about, Fakim Mahamad, taking all the glory and being the one that does the inauguration and everything. I attended and the event. I didn't see Kwesi Kwote there. Did he boycott it or he wasn't invited? Kwesi Kwote wasn't invited. Wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> For, it was his idea to start with. Mm -hmm. It's in his country. Yeah. He's a deputy uh, commission uh, sitting, chair. Sitting, sitting deputy, deputy chair. chair. And it's been inaugurated in his home country. <laughs> and he and was present, present in the country. Present in Ghana. And he wasn't invited. He wasn't invited. We know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. Okay. <laughs> I know that for a fact. Wow. And, and maybe it was because, you know, at that point, it had become a dicey issue as to whether Kwesi was going to run against his boss, you know, for the, for the ultimate, wait the AU minute, chair. Wait a minute, wait a minute. But both You're of them could have country. been there. Yes, you're my it country. Is, it is Ghana. We're doing the thing in Ghana. And we, we uh, uh, in, uh, the last time I checked, the last time I checked, yeah. democracy is open competition. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I'm missing something. But... All right, <laughs> let's shelve that. <laughs> why, why he wasn't invited and all that stuff. Th let's go back to his relationship with Faki during the past four years mm -hmm. leading up to here. Mm -hmm. How would you characterize that relationship? I would say excellent, perfect. Okay. Until, until the chairman purported to take a decision on behalf of the entire AU commission that was very unpopular. What was that decision? The, the sacking of uh, Madame Arikana ah, Chihombo Rikwao. Okay. That, that was the breaking point. Okay. Because... So up until la uh, um, about... Two years ago. Two years ago. Was it two years ago? 20... Yeah, that was... 2019. Yeah, right? that was getting to the end of 20... 2019. Okay, really, so about yeah. a year ago. Mm -hmm. Little over a year ago. Mm -hmm. So he took that unilateral decision. Yes. And why did that sour relation between Kwesi Kwote and You know, Fakim? because such a decision is actually, is, 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 it has um, far-reaching consequences. Okay. If you're sacking the African ambassador to the United States. You don't okay, do it unilaterally. Of, of course. Okay. You know, and the way it was done, mm -hmm. if, if she had done something wrong, Okay. If she had done anything that goes against the terms of her appointment and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But we all know what happened. Arikana just discovered something mm -hmm. that is inimical to the interests of the African continent. And she spoke about it. You know, interestingly, th that part I didn't get. Uh huh. Arikana is from uh, Arikana Chiumbo Rikwa. It's from she Zimbabwe. She's originally from Zimbabwe. Uh huh. Married to a Ghanaian. Yeah. In fact, in my interview with her, she said that she picked up that position as a Ghanaian citizen. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. On her Ghanaian passport. On her Ghanaian mm -hmm. passport. Both uh, Ghana and Zimbabwe are English-speaking countries. Mm -hmm. The issues that she spoke about concerned how France is abusing the Francophone, Francophone countries. countries, of which Chad is one. 
<laughs> so if you are fucky, I'm like, I'm sitting here silently clapping. Go on, girl. Sure. Okay? Am sure. I missing something? Sure. Why would Faki then turn around and suck her? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you see, the, 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 you see, some of these things, it, it, is, it is very difficult to put fingers <laughs> at certain places, mm -hmm. but you can make assumptions, okay? Because everybody knows that maybe Faki himself, mm -hmm. maybe he himself, when he goes to sleep and he thinks about it. I'm the leader for this continent of Africa. Okay. Maybe there are certain powers that are stronger than him, that are dictating for him to do some of the things that he's done. And that like the second, the, because, because look at it. When Arikana came out and spoke out, mm -hmm. let, let, let's, let's look at who would be most offended. France? That, that, that young in chap France. in France. Yeah. Is young the one enough to be their, their nephews. <laughs> so you, know, you want to tell me that these old men <laughs> who we respect in our uh, country, oh, president, they, they are allowing this small boy to dribble them around. France is, is that what I'm getting? France is a superpower. I know, but that's France a little France is a mighty, uh -huh. mighty superpower. And? Okay. Uh -huh. So for Faki to have acted the way he acted mm -hmm. under those circumstances, when France pe feels peeved, how can this little girl... Mm -hmm. Rise up and expose such, such a mighty. We know France is siphoning tens of billions of dollars we know from that. the African countries. We know that it had to take a lady of the caliber of a quow. Right. I like calling her a quow because quow. I like Ghana to own her. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, uh -huh. for 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 all these years, mm -hmm. and then she comes up and by virtue of her work as. Africa's ambassador to the United States, you know, finds this out and blows it out. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had been Faki, mm -hmm. and maybe if Faki had been himself, the first thing is for him to go and congratulate her. Yeah. I gave you a job, and you've done it very well. See, this, this brings me to this question. You see, I'll ask you this. Uh, in your life, I'm sure you've lived under somebody's roof before. Mm -hmm. I still, person, I still do. <laughs> <laughs> that person feeds you, uh -huh. clothes you, mm -hmm. gives you shelter. But if that person is abusing you, in our language, we, in our parlance, we, we say, when you, to, one can so to where you are. Yeah, you are your bunny. All it takes is for you to say, oh, you know what? I appreciate everything you're doing. But as for this one, dear, I beg, don't, don't go there. Why is it so difficult for our leaders to have that conversation with Francis is a superpower. Fine, this woman is talking about them. He's angry. You are Faki. What what is so difficult about for Faki to sit down with Macron and say, you know what? Uh, the way she's exposed this, maybe you need to tweak how you do things. But not for me to fire her. What is difficult about that but conversation? If, if, I if, I the, if the instruction that comes uh -huh. is fire her. And you have no option. Why don't you have an option? <laughs> no, why don't you have an option? Maybe we are waiting for you and Faki to have an interview like this. I'm and maybe he you. will tell you. I'm telling you. He will tell you where he doesn't you, have an option. Why don't you have an option? <laughs> let's say let's say France comes to you and say, look, if you don't fire her, we're not gonna do ABC. Well, you know that the ABC that France is doing, he's taking XYZ from the continent. True or false? True. Okay, so I'm not going to fire her. If you're not going to do A, B, C, you're not going to get X, Y, Z. Let's see who will balk. Well, unfortunately, uh -huh. I think that Africa, we've come to a stage where what we grew up, I uh -huh. mean, some of us grew up, the kind of thing that was infused into us, mm -hmm. the Pan-Africanist energy mm -hmm. and the drive, mm -hmm. the will to learn about the likes of Yasantua, Kwame Nkrumah, all these people, you know, and the kind of leaders that we had mm -hmm. previously. It's looking like in modern times, maybe we have we've, balls. Maybe we've, got, we've gone 60, 70 years back. Because the kind of things that are unfolding yeah. right now in Africa, it makes some of us that have sacrificed. Look, for 15 years, 
Okay, I've sacrificed my New York Supreme Court lawyer's bar, mm -hmm. you know, license mm -hmm. to be in Africa and to work on this Kozwa project. I've done, you know, about 35 African countries trying to work for African unity. When I should be sitting in New York and earning some $12,000, $15,000 every month and spending. My brother. But the, the point is that some of us, we have that Pan-Africanist energy in us that can never, you know, you we can never can let go. You can't do anything about it. Yeah. Okay. But, but here we are. Mm -hmm. You ask yourself, if it had been somebody like Kwame Nkrumah that is the head of the African Union. What do you think would happen? On that note, <laughs> on that note, let's go for a quick break. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this, more is coming. More is coming. So let's go on a quick break. We'll be back. This is Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah. You're watching Diaspora Network Television. We'll be right back. As the national regulator of the communications industry in Ghana, the National Communications Authority seeks to ensure an environment that is safe and fair for consumers and service providers. NCA grants licenses and authorizations for operation of communication systems and services, develops guidelines to streamline communication activities, establish and monitor quality of service indicators for operators and service providers. NCA is in eight regions, Nakra, Tamale, Takradi, Kumar, Masi, Ho, Kufaridua, Sunyani, and Bolgatanga. Do you have unresolved complaints with the service providers? Contact us on 0800-110662-0307-011419 between the hours of 8 o'clock a.m. and 5 o'clock p.m. from Monday to Friday or visit our website at www.nca.org.gh and follow the procedure for filing a complaint or submitting inquiry. National Communications Authority Communications for Development. We wake up every morning to different stories from politics, business, sports, and entertainment. These stories, one way or the other, affect our lifestyle and dealings with family, friends, and business associates. Your take on Diaspora Network Television gives you an opportunity to have your take on these pertinent issues via phone in and messages to our social media platforms. DNT Ghana on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If it's an important trend and story, we will definitely talk about it. Your take with me, Yalsechi, on DNT. Would you buy anything without first knowing exactly what the product was and how it could benefit you? Definitely not. Neither should you vote for your next member of parliament without knowing who they are and how they plan to solve your problems. Watch the next MP only on Diaspora Network Television and find out the men and women who want to represent you in parliament. The next MP only on DNT. Hello and welcome back. Um, before we continue with the conversation, I want you to take a look at this. It's not by accident that this thing is light purple and I'm wearing purple today. That's for a reason. Specialized Water. They've been a very good supporter of ours and this show, Specialized. I, let me take a sip so that you know how really... <laughs> Heaven. Drink Specialized. Um, Welcome back. This is Diaspora Weekly, and we're talking African politics. Now we know that Faki, you say some of the leaders privately <laughs> call him dead horse. Some call him a dog. This, these are, of course, we can't get into names. It reminds me of uh, another president somewhere on the other side of the Atlantic who's employees all calls him all kinds of names <laughs> but it's a work for that is this a new trend now where you know someone is not good enough but you cannot come out and talk let's look at west africa mm -hmm. the last time i checked west africa is part of africa correct <laughs> right very much so alasan utara mm -hmm. he just announced that he's running for a third term against the constitution of Cote d'Ivoire. what do we hear from faki Silence. Al Alpha Conde, president of Guinea, same thing, third, third term. I'm running. What do we hear out of African Union? Silence. Okay. Well, he, well, he spoke about Mali. <laughs> <laughs> because there was a coup. I, I mean, so why is it that all these things are going on? 
but he doesn't address them. Um, jihadists in Burkina Faso and Mali, that, that has something to do with the, uh, the coup d'etat and everything. So if it's not doing a good job, why is he there? And running on a post, which we're now going to talk about. That, that is the most amazing aspect of it all. It's never happened in African Union politics. As I told you, the last time he ran, he ran against about five other opponents. Okay. And it is even more amazing when you consider that even within the AU set up itself, mm -hmm. we have demonstrations after demonstrations in Ethiopia. Okay. Even the workers. Yes. In African Union. The workers they issued don't a want statement. him. Yes. They, it is not a statement. It's statements after statements after. Yes. They do demonstrations right there on 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 the African Union compound uh -huh. and say they, we, we never had a boss like this. We don't want him. We can't work with him. He's hiring cronies, nepotism everywhere. Everywhere. It's all there in the in the news. Okay. I, I I don't know what our leaders don't get. Okay. About about and at this. A time, this this comes at a time when. These boys overthrew the government in Mali, mm -hmm. and ECOWAS, led by uh, President uh, Goodluck Jonathan, when they negotiate, no, you need one year. It's almost like we have a zero tolerance for dictatorship, mm -hmm. and yet we have um, Museveni mm -hmm. in Uganda, mm -hmm. You're very, yeah. Paul Bia in uh, Cameroon, and you say, oh, these people, they've been there, they will die off. But now we're breeding dictators. In West at, the, Africa. at the African Union, and the African Union itself is now a dictatorship, more or less. What example are we setting to the member countries? Huh. <laughs> it, it is. It is. It is. Sometimes you you are lost for words, even as to how to describe it, because you cannot believe these things are unfolding in in your eyes right here. You know, right now at this level of democratic you know, advancement mm -hmm. on the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. But, you know, talking about the leadership of the African Union again, mm -hmm. and I, we, we, got, we got to be talking about it again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Okay. If the people that are, Muhammad occupies the 18th floor mm -hmm. of the African Union, the Kwesikote, as the deputy, occupies the 17th floor. All the remaining 15 floors, almost everybody there, knows the difference between the two. Almost everybody. We've, so never, most... we've never heard of any, any outrage or anything about Kwesikote's style of administering okay. the, the organization. But almost every week, you Google Faki Mahamat, what comes out is demonstrations and protests and statements from, from the rank and file of the people right there in, so, in Ethiopia so let's get into at the, the AU headquarters. Let's get okay. into the nomination But we process. come to a the, 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 the nominations. Mm -hmm. First of all, I never believed Faki Mahamat himself who had a gas to say, I'm running for another four years. Give me eight years as the leader of this whole continent of Africa. I never believed he had a gas to do that. Because he himself knows he has succeeded or failed. <laughs> he knows better than all of us. That he and, has and, what? And do you think he feels he has succeeded? I don't think he himself... Can you put a finger on one thing that you say, oh, when this guy, the last four years, this is what he has done? It will be difficult. Because, as, as I say, every week, we have statements and demonstrations and things coming out of Ethiopia. The people that sit and work with him are telling us that the man is a failure. Hmm. So but, why didn't North, Amer North Africa put up a candidate? Why didn't West Africa put up a candidate when we have <laughs> West Africa? We had the deputy chair position. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ghana, we had the we deputy chair. We put up chair. Chambers. Even Chambers. For two days? We put up even Chambers for a couple of days. Yeah, Just but to we be the deadline. Them. Just yeah. to be the deadline. So why do you think. And then he... Chambers chickens out after two days okay. and says, I'm not running anymore. So maybe he wasted and the space. Why did they nominate? Chambers instead of Kwesi Quarter, the deputy who had intended to run. That is another <laughs> another question that is very difficult to answer. Okay. But but I would have thought, mm -hmm. okay, you remember, I mean, when it, it got to the crunch, 
my organization, we made we made our position clear. Okay, Chambas is another fantastic guy. Mm -hmm. He's a, a fierce Pan-Africanist. Mm -hmm. He's done it all and seen it all. Okay, if Ghana decides to go with Chambas or with Korte, we wouldn't have any problem. We were going to support either of them. Okay. We made that clear. And That's we made that clear to the government. Because prior to that, the government had invited my organization for a virtual meeting about what our stake was about mm -hmm. the elections. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we had, at that time, Chambers wasn't in the picture. We had, I mean, demonstrated to government why we, we wanted Kwesi to take over. Okay. In fact, I had an interview with uh, Her Excellency Arikana Chiumbo uh -huh. She had indicated during my interview that she's interested. Mm -hmm. And DNT went out with that story. But apparently, yeah, and then she said, no, I said I was interested, but I wasn't sure that my brother, Kwesi Quarte. Quarte is running. If Kwesi Quarte is running, I am not running because I believe in him. Thank so you, you have Arikana. This is important. Very important. Arikana Chiumbori Kwa, who is the vociferous critic of France and all outside influence of Africa, saying that if my brother is running, I will back out because I know him. And then what happened? Well, my organization was part of that, that deliberations, mm -hmm. because you, you remember that even Kwesikote himself mm -hmm. initially was very reluctant at mm -hmm. coming out to run, okay. you know. And we, at the time, didn't know whether Arikana would run or not. So we started engaging mm -hmm. and putting a lot of pressure, you know, because we have 50 countries in Africa. Right. You know, we have leaders in all those and they have the voice and all that. So we started putting a lot of pressure on Kwesi. Incidentally, when, when uh, our organizations, the, the partnership agreement with the African Union was signed, mm -hmm. we had about 30 of some of these leaders from all the various African countries mm -hmm. in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, at that mm -hmm. AU conference. Mm -hmm. So they had met with Kwesi. Mm -hmm. All these countries' guys had met with Kwesi, mm -hmm. and they had been impressed about mm -hmm. you know, his sense of leadership and the Pan-Africanists, they saying that he instills in you and all mm -hmm. that. So we took that position that, okay, Let's engage Arikana, mm -hmm. okay, and talk to her about, you know, shelving her own right. political ambitions as leader of the African Union so that we, we combine the support. So we were part of that deliberation process that got, you know, Arikana. And once she said yes, we now had a lot of this thing to now push Kwesi out of his retirement plans to say, no, now come out and run against your boss okay. because we got to take him out. Right. You know, now so, talking about Arikana, I wanted to show you. We're going to show this on on uh, uh, on the screen. This is a hypothetical AU Commission chair matchup between Musa Faki, the incumbent, and Arikana Chiumbarikwa. This is an internet survey. Mm -hmm. The question: Which of these people has Africa's best interest at heart? Musa Faki, the incumbent, 4.84%. <laughs> Other, 1.61%. Arikana Chiumburikwa, 93.55%. Next question. Who can better stand up to foreign influences in Africa? Mm -hmm. In fact, the numbers are exactly the same. 93% for uh, Arikana, 4.84% for Faki, and 1.61. Now, we, then, then who should be the next African Union Commission chairperson? Mm -hmm. Other, 3.23. Musa Faki, 4.84. Arikana, 91.94%. So, with this number, it's not even close. It's not <laughs> even close between people who are voting on the internet. It's not close with people who work for Faki. It's not close <laughs> to anybody. But yet, we didn't even open it up to competition. We said, no, everybody, North America, no, 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 um, uh, no candidate. No candidate. West East Africa, no candidate. East Africa, no East candidate. East Africa, no candidate. South Africa, 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 no candidate. <laughs> and <laughs> you see, 
And one point, if you had done this survey, mm -hmm. okay, right there in the AU setup, Set up, right. the, the, the people that are working with Faki, mm -hmm. you wouldn't get any results that are different from this. <laughs> Look at that. Yes, you wouldn't. So, okay. so it is only when it comes to our political leadership mm -hmm. that we can have a change. You know, when, because, you know, the thing is this, for the African Union Commission elections, it is only the heads of states who vote. Who vote. There are only 55 votes. Is it votes. time to change that, to open, <laughs> because if, if this person, African Union Commission chairperson, is truly the president of Africa. Because it's voted for by the presidents of Africa. I know. It's but the, I, it's I, the 55 has the time presidents come, that vote. Has the time come for that position to be elected by popular vote throughout the continent. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that would be massive. <laughs> maybe maybe we can start we can start Maybe we can start pushing maybe that. We can start Take pushing the vote that agenda. because you know what? Because these leaders and you know what my president I love him to death. Nana Kufuado sure. is a we, great my we friend. All love him, yes. But you know what? And there are 55 of them. And when they get together, we don't know what goes on in there. And mm -hmm. For them to allow this guy to go on the post, post with these results, I say the time has come for that position to be elected by uh, a popular vote throughout Africa. So w what do we do? Every, every African with an African passport can vote? Yes. We churn out one billion uh, votes. Uh, look, if, 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 <laughs> look, listen, if it's possible, if, if the idea resonates, yeah. the logistical details is a piece of cake. It can be done just like that. Electronically. Yes, I mean, electronically. With, with how we modern vote. Infra but yeah. if this person wields that much power, where well, he's now controlling the heads of states, and Ramaphosa, you're the chairman, the chairperson of the entire African Union. Yes. And the president of Zimbabwe, his Was excellent name, Yeah. wanted to nominate Arikana. Arikana. But when he nominates her, he needs the support of the SADC. Yeah. And Ramaphosa said, nope, I'm not going for it. Let Faki go. The same thing played out in West Africa. And the same thing played out in North Africa. And the same thing played out, of course, Central Africa is its own base. Yeah. So you wouldn't expect anything. But look at East Africa. We uh -huh. have people like PLO Lubumba uh -huh. that the same amount of pressure that we applied on, I mean, um, Kwesikorte and Arikana, we applied the same on him. And he says, well, you've put the fire in my belly, but the next day it's like, uh, am I going to win? <laughs> okay. You know, so these things keep running. At the end of the day, we have a situation, whether we like it or not, 4th, 10th September, 4th September is passed, okay? Of course, for, for Ghana and West Africa, our deadline was the 10th of last month. Okay. Okay. So... It is done. So no nomination has come up anywhere in Africa. All right. So before we go on our next break, I've got two questions for you. Question number one. Yeah. We know that most of, throughout the world, when someone is running for president or leadership, they say, "I'll do this." Oh, you criticize. But the moment they get there and they sit on the chair, reality hits. So my question is. Do these leaders face things that you and I will never know because we've never sat on that chair? I think I'll believe that. I think I'll believe that. Because from the way things have played out, especially mm -hmm. with this AU elections, mm -hmm. I cannot for the life of me believe yeah. that maybe it's just, I mean, what, just what means the eye. There, might, there could be some other considerations, okay, that could play out mm -hmm. that we, the ordinary fools. But, my, know. but, but our, our, our mutual hero, and mm -hmm. I call him a hero because in Ghana he has done an amazing thing. I love him. You know, he he's, stood, just, he's just become, he's just been become elected the ECOWAS, ECOWAS chair, you know, chair Today, for which we salute congratulations, and congratulate Nana Adidam Kufwa, the president of Ghana. You've made us proud. Yes. Uh, now the new chairman of ECOWAS. ECOWAS. Maybe but if my, he had been yeah. before, Maybe Ekuwas could have looked at it differently. And some, <laughs> some are saying it's... But, 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 but my thing is... Yeah. He was sitting on that chair when he stood in front of Macron and said, Ghana beyond aid. That speech... Resonated. Resonated all across the, uh, yeah. the globe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, 
how do you go from uh, Ghana Beyond Aid? We don't like, and I looked at Macron's face when Nana Adu was <laughs> speaking that. And Macron was like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> he said, here's what I'm saying. But then, now, Nana is now playing by the rules with the rest of them. That part I don't get. Do you understand it's that? It's shocking. It's shocking. That's why I, I'm tempted to believe, you know, and agree with you, that there could be other things that play up on the decisions that these heads make. Okay. You know, and maybe not until you are in those shoes, you wouldn't know. Okay. So, so, so we cannot criticize. So then my know, last question before we go on the break this, what can we do? Maybe we need to relieve them of that pressure. Because if they're making <laughs> some decisions that they cannot help, all 55 uh, presidents, maybe they are under some kind of pressure. Oh, okay, we have to play by the rules. Maybe we need to relieve them of that pressure and take the vote away from them and give it to those of us <laughs> who don't have anybody to Any answer pressure. to. <laughs> like, I, would, I, would, I, I would think that the president would say, hey, you guys want the vote here. Take it. Take it from our hand. Why wouldn't they do that? I think they would. I think they would. <laughs> That is, that is going to be a, a monumental revolution in but African think politics. Think about it. If I'm, a, if I'm a leader of a country yeah. and I feel like, look, there are this consideration, I really, really want to do this, but <laughs> I can't do it, right? <laughs> so I'm really holding my nose to vote for Faki. And we know this because we know the names they call him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if other considerations are forcing us to cast certain vote. Maybe we don't want the vote. Let our people Let vote. Let every citizen vote. Yes. Why can't we do that? Maybe. And, and can we can you, for, start this movement? Because DNT will be right behind you. We will see. <laughs> uh, no, our, yeah, we'll, we'll put it up to our, our delegates and constituents around the continent and see. Well. Maybe we can, <laughs> we can push that. It, it is a brilliant idea because... Mm -hmm. For all you know, mm -hmm. the heads of states are going to support that. That's right. Maybe they don't want the pressure. <laughs> Let the citizens <laughs> vote. People can come to think of it, that is what we, that's how we can really take away these influences from But the, the point is that before the citizens vote, mm -hmm. you have the, the singular responsibility of nominating the candidate. And you refuse to nominate a candidate. No. Who if, votes, the, if, then, the, if, if the citizens are going to vote, it will be open competition. You, um, <laughs> so you can have about 20, 25 candidates for and then there the are chairmanship. Okay, so there are regional, the regional primaries. Blocks. Uh -huh. Regional primaries. Okay. West African primaries, East African primaries, North, South, Central. Finally, every, at every uh, uh, election time, we'll have five individuals okay. running for that. And then the region... You say, yeah, some regions have more uh, population, population you know. but but that may not hurt because <laughs> if I'm central, if I live in Chad and <laughs> Faki is there, I'm not voting for him. I'll probably vote for someone else than Faki. So it's not always going to play that this region is always going to vote for their candidate. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That is something we need to look at. Hey, you know what? You heard it first here. This idea, if it comes here, it's a credit between you and I. We started this baby, <laughs> all right? Let's go on a quick break. We'll be right back. We wake up every morning to different stories from politics, business, sports, and entertainment. These stories, one way or the other, affect our lifestyle and dealings with family, friends, and business associates. Your take on Diaspora Network Television gives you an opportunity to have your take on these pertinent issues via phone in and messages to our social media platforms, DNT Ghana on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If it's an important trend and story, we will definitely talk about it. Your take with me, Yalsechi, on DNT. Would you buy anything without first knowing exactly what the product was and how it could benefit you? Definitely not. Neither should you vote for your next member of parliament without knowing who they are and how they plan to solve your problems. Watch the next MP only on Diaspora Network Television and find out the men and women who want to represent you in parliament. The next MP only on DNT. Welcome back to Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah, and you're watching Diaspora Network Television. My guest has been an amazing companion.
compelling conversation with Advocate Safu Abrebresa. Now, we are nearing the end, but we still got a lot of things to touch on. Arikana. Yeah. What happened? Why is she no longer a candidate? Okay, you rightly said it, that Arikana initially had been prevailed upon by millions of people mm -hmm. to run and, you know, take on Faki Muhammad. Mm -hmm. But when we intervened and spoke to her, she decided, okay, if Kwesi would run, mm -hmm. let's go with Kwesi. And she threw her support behind our brother. Mm -hmm. Eventually, Kwesi didn't get a nomination. We had a nomination for Chambers. Chambers checking out after two days. Okay, I've not spoken to him. I don't know what really made him, what it is that he saw in two days that made him back out, <laughs> you know. But the statement he released, mm -hmm. wait a minute. What happened? You saw, you saw the statement he released. It was published by Daily Guide mm -hmm. that after winning the nomination, he went consulting Chad. He, you know, we nominate you, go and take this guy out. And then the you first thing you did was that you go and consult the person you are supposed to go and kick out. What, what do you think he would tell you to do? That was his statement. He said after consulting with Chad, he decided to back out. Okay, so now Chambers <laughs> backs out. Ghana loses the slot. <laughs> okay, so now Arikana says, okay, I was, I was... Wait, in, wait, 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 hang on. Uh, so, let's bring it to Ghana. <laughs> so, the NDC nominates Mahama to run in December's election. Yeah. And then Mahama will call Nana Dodanko. Oh, please, sir, can I run against you? Is that a situation? Yes, yeah, that's a situation. Yeah, that, that's, exactly, <laughs> that's exactly the situation. He goes to consult the person <laughs> he's supposed to go and take out. Wow. And then... He says, oh, after consulting him, <laughs> I'm not going again. Okay. Like Nana Dodanko Akufuadu say, oh, by all means, here, come and fight. Of course he's going to say no. So why sure. did he go and, 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 and... So why should you even go and consult, consult Chad him. in the first place? Okay. Okay. So he does that. And then after two days, when the Ghana's deadline is already passed. passed. Then he chickens out. Because he was nominated... On the 11th hour, right, 3 p.m. on that day. So even now, after that, if Ghana wanted to submit another candidate, it, it could it could it, It's finished. But it's then, finished. but then there's another another aspect of it mm -hmm. that Ghana re actually did nominate, you know, somebody for the deputy chair. Okay. Which, if it is confirmed, mm -hmm. is a good and refreshing development, you know, because I mean, Her Excellency Amapobi. You know, Ghana's you, you ambassador know to the UN. I wouldn't take any solace to that. Why? If Faki mm -hmm. is the chair, uh -huh. and a Ghanaian is coming male, to be, to, hang on, okay. a Ghanaian male, Kwesi Kwote, yeah, is the that didn't chair. work out well. Uh huh. Now you're gonna have the same <laughs> Ghanaian female now female. coming female. to be the deputy he's, chair. He's gonna eat her for lunch. So why well, bother? Well, but but you know, right now after at the end of the nominations, we have two ladies for that position. One from Lu Rwanda. Rwanda, the Rwanda lady is there, and then mm -hmm. Amapobi is in there. Okay. The two of them will run for it. Okay. We don't know who will win. Okay. To me, it wouldn't matter. Whoever we, wins, they might cannot. as well not give him a deputy. Let him just <laughs> run. <laughs> so we give the whole country they, they, to him they, for give free. It to him. You know, I mean, what, take what everything else? because France said. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, what part that gets me? France was bullying the Francophone countries. Yes. Dr. Kanachi Mbori Kwao comes to save comes, them. Save them. Mm -hmm. Now we say, oh, now let's just give the whole continent to Emmanuel Macron. Hmm. Is that not what happened? Yeah. What can we do about it? But you never know. Maybe one of these two ladies takes the deputy chair position and can I'm rise not, up to I'm the not, occasion. I'm not even looking. They can rise up to the occasion and fight for Africa. They are mothers. <sighs> Arikana has that instinct that wants to fight for her children. Okay? Maybe. Just maybe. Can we extend, can we push for an extension of a deadline so that they can get, because if Muhammad uh, Faki goes on a post, it's a bad reflection on this continent 
what can we do? You know the system. What can we do to make sure, whoever it is, that we at least have a choice, that these leaders have a choice? Put somebody there. Put you there. Oh, not and then today. if <laughs> Wait. And if... Uh, look, here's my point, okay? Uh -huh. All these leaders, and they, I'll always go back to Mali. Uh -huh. When the coup happened, the, 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 the relentlessness with which ECOWAS went there and said, no, 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 you can't do it. You can't stay there for three, three years. It has to be one. That tells me we have a continent that has zero tolerance for dictatorship. Mm -hmm. So why would the same leaders turn around and say, okay, we're not even going to allow competition. Put somebody there and then turn around and vote for the guy. We understand. But Ghana but put somebody there mm -hmm. and that somebody when consulting the opponent. Okay, so why don't, uh, what, what happened to SADC? What happened to East Africa? What happened? Now I hear the Northern Africans are making noise, right? Mm -hmm. Is it too late? It's too late. They're not, unless there's an amendment to their constitution or whatever, because African Union election nominations is 4th for, for, for September. Okay. It's done. Unless mm -hmm. something unexpected happens. Such as? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how I much don't know. of a role? If how much of a role would Faki play in the extension of the uh, deadline? Would it be up to the leaders, or would it be up to him? It, it is something that we have to check. You know what the Constitution of the African Union says, what the heads of states think. But you see, the point is that the heads of states, honestly, they've demonstrated complete apathy in this matter to the point where it will be suicidal for us to think that even if civil society rose up and, and did some ground shaking, mm -hmm. they will still complement our efforts. Because they've demonstrated it, I mean, all over the place. The last thing I was expecting to happen after what happened in West Africa and in, in Ghana, mm -hmm. okay, for, for SADC, of all places, at least you are not French speaking, Ramaphosa, you're the chairman of African Union. Yes. And, and, you and, could your and the president of Zimbabwe comes in and says, okay, mm. now I'm bringing my lady now. Yeah. Okay. And then we can have Sadek saying, no, nah, keep her for the next four years. We want, we want Faki to go on a post. <laughs> so it happens in West Africa, then it happens in South Afri Southern Africa. Mandela's home stage, Kwame Nkrumah's home stage, yeah. Giving up on Pan-Africanism like that on a silver... There must be something we don't know, my brother. Because it, 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 it is otherwise unbelievable that this could, these things could be At happening. At this point, um, what can we do? You, the viewer, call your president. What, what can they do? I mean, I am, I am so much about problem, solution. Problem, solution. This is a problem. How do we solve it? All these countries of Africa, we're all thriving towards, you know, democracy. Democratic institutions, you know, people's voices have to be heard. I kept telling Lumumba that the voice of the people is the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, with all the attributes that you have, mm -hmm. why can't you take a stand for Africa mm -hmm. when the voice of the people are backing you? Yeah. Okay, so the point is that if the people, the citizens, I mean, you, ha you have the, the, the figures of the polls, mm -hmm. and it is, it is something, it's unmissable. Everybody in Africa knows that if you put Kwesi Korte and Faki Bahama there. There's no contest. No contest. If you put Arikana and Faki Bahama, no contest. If you, even if you put PLO Lumumba mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Faki there, no contest. If I put you against Faki, well, me, he will beat me. <laughs> How do you know that? I'm not. I'm not the there. The guy's a dead horse. So are you a dead horse? <laughs> I'm not a dead horse. Okay. But, <laughs> you know. But the point is, the point is, if all the 55 African heads of states uh -huh. can decide, uh -huh. we will not put up anybody against this guy. There must be something unspeakable. About well, you it. know what. <laughs> My friend, advocate Safu Abebreza, you've dissected African politics to us, and I really, really appreciate you. We have to bring this to an end. But whatever you say, 
that there must be something. These leaders owe it to us to come back and tell us what pressure is Emmanuel Macron is putting on them. Because in all this conversation, I don't think Trump cares. Trump could care less about Africa. Boris Johnson, when you look at the way they've handled the Anglophone countries, mm -hmm. I don't think he mm -hmm. cares. Mm -hmm. China, they're coming with, in with cash to do whatever. So in terms of control, everything revolves around this small boy in Paris. Small boy in Paris. Emmanuel Macron, you're the one I'm talking to. How can grown men <laughs> sit there and let this small boy dribble you, no matter what power he has? 55 grown men can look him in the eye and say, look, you may have a bomb, you may have the world, but on this, we're not budging. What do you think Emmanuel Macron would have done? He would have had nothing to do but to play ball with us. So you know what? I appreciate you, but I don't buy the notion that there is something there that we don't know. I think these uh, uh, leaders just chickened out. And I'm sorry, until I know better, that's what I'm going with. This has been Diaspora Weekly. And my friend, Advocate Safu Ababre said, thank you for coming. Thank you, my brother. And this has been Diaspora Weekly. And please join us. And if there's something that you can do, call your president. Call anybody. We need competition in Africa. We cannot have a non-performer go for another four years. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for our other programs.